Each of us, as we grow up in our families, are introduced into a common life, a life in communion with others. You and I are meant to grow up together with others and for others so we might learn how to love and how to live. It's an expression of this truth that you and I are made in the image and likeness of God. God himself is in communion. Three persons, but one God. And so we are meant to always be connected to one another in selfless love and service. In our families, we come together throughout our lives and we celebrate great joys, weddings, baptisms, anniversaries. And as a family, we also come together many times in great sadness and tragedy. Our parish family comes here every Sunday to experience the greatest joy imaginable, the reality of the saving action of Jesus Christ on the altar of his cross that is made present for us here. And as a parish family, we come here sometimes in great sadness to mourn. And we will do that this Tuesday morning for the funeral mass of Dr. Frank Esses as we pray for his young family in their inconsolable loss. As a parish and a school community, we are meant to live a common life striving always to pray for one another, to support one another. We pray earnestly for Frank's wife, Lauren, and their three young children, for Frank's brother, Tony, and his family. We can't imagine their shock and their loss. We search for answers and understanding, and we come to the only place and to the only person who can give us that. Jesus Christ, the one eternal word of God who suffered and died for us so that we might have life in him. We must come to him in all of those times of great struggle and trial. We must come here because this event must be for us the most significant and important reality in our lives. Because here we receive and are in communion with the living God. And then we need to see another experience, an event that is connected to this one. And that is our encounter with Christ in the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. Our ability to engage in and experience the love of God is hampered by our sin when we sin, we turn away and we remove ourselves from the depth of the intimacy that God wants to live with us. You know, of course, our reception of the Eucharist affects the forgiveness of all venial sins, so we experience that power of that mercy here. But in the confessional, in that sacramental encounter, that greatest reality of the infinite mercy of God is made real and tangible. As we said at the beginning of this Mass, we gather this, this Laetare Sunday, that word meaning rejoice. In our second reading, St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, we hear the source of our joy. That God who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life in Christ. And yet we know the sadness that will come to us in this life. And we see that symbolized in our first reading. The sacred writer references the exile, how the people of God had turned away from the covenant that God had established with them. They became weakened. They were overthrown by the Babylonians. But how King Cyrus of Persia would then be this instrument of God to bring his people back to Jerusalem where the temple would be rebuilt and the people flourish again. You and I are always in need of that restoration and that renewal. We need to open ourselves up to that power of God's mercy, particularly in the sacrament of penance. 
because I hope it is obvious to all of us that the forgiveness of our sins is the only thing that can offer us true and lasting happiness and joy. Because it is only in the forgiveness of our sins that you and I have the hope of eternal life. This is the whole point of Lent, to remind us of that. And yet our human condition, weakened as it is by original sin, it's hard for us to remember that always. And so today's gospel brings us back to probably the most basic and simple truth of our faith. That famous passage of John 3.16, that banner that they used to have at all the sporting events, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. <laughs> and I think the next sentence is even better. <laughs> For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And so we gather today as a parish family and always as we pray for one another, in a special way we pray this week for the S's family and for all of our families who suffer great tragedy and sickness and difficulties. We see how we are meant to always come together and to be together to receive God's mercy and his healing most powerfully here in, the, here in the Eucharist and also in the sacrament of penance. So that you and I might always know the strength, the love, the consolation, and the peace of Christ. That our communion with him may be what it is meant to be, the most significant reality in our lives so that we may always be sustained and then one day saved through him.